Hello, I'm hematologist oncologist Dr. Tony Talibi, and now we're going to discuss the management of locally advanced, potentially resectable cancer of the pancreas. Here with Dr. Alberto Montero, assistant professor of medicine, University of Miami. Dr. Montero, let's assume that a patient, for whatever reason, has had a scan of the abdomen which shows a mass in the pancreas, and there does not appear to be any cancer anywhere else in the body. What happens next with that patient? Uh, so generally what would happen is, assuming they've already had a diagnosis of pancreatic cancer, the surgeon uh, would look at the scans with the team and the medical oncologist and determine if surgery was possible. And so the best possibility is to have surgery because that's the only cure. Unfortunately, only about 10 to 20 percent of patients are able to have surgery. How does a surgeon determine whether a cancer is resectable or not? True. Uh, there is some variation between surgeons, so some surgeons, depending on their expertise, may say that something's resectable or not. But generally what they're looking at is where the pancreas, the mass in the pancreas is located and also uh, how near certain blood vessels which are uh, in the pancreatic area. And so if a tumor is evading a blood vessel, then uh, surgery is not uh, possible. I see. What if the surgeon decides that the tumor is resectable? What is a Whipple procedure? So a Whipple procedure is when the surgeon takes out a portion of the pancreas, generally the head of the pancreas, along with a part of the small intestine, the first part called the duodenum because they share a similar blood supply. And then also they remove part of the, the biliary ducts where the cancer originated. And then they reconnect the ducts that are connected to the first part of the small intestine to the second part of the small intestine. It's called the jejunum. And that's essentially what a Whipple is. I see. Well, what is the recovery time from that? Uh, it's, it varies based on the patient and if they have any other uh, underlying medical problems, but it generally if a procedure goes well, it should be about a week mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then they would go home and then generally they would typically make a full recovery about three to four weeks after that. I see. Now, now what if the, 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 re the cancer is, is borderline not resectable? Is it possible to administer either chemotherapy or chemoradiation beforehand to make the cancer resectable? So uh, there's a lot of clinical research involved with that because, like I said, the only curative uh, procedure is surgery. So uh, if a patient can have surgery, that's really the most uh, preferable thing. So mm -hmm. a lot of uh, research has been done on combining different types of chemotherapy, either by themselves or with radiation, to help permit that. The reality is that pancreatic cancer is a very resistant disease and even those haven't been very successful in allowing patients who are borderline to have surgery. Now what if the cancer is for sure not resectable? What happens next for that patient? So when it's definitely not resectable, which is the majority of the case, uh, like I said about 80 percent of the time, uh, then the goal of the treatment is to delay the progression of disease, meaning that uh, we can't, with chemo or radiation, we can't cure the patient, but we can prevent the cancer from uh, spreading to other places for a period of time and also helping with quality of life with pain and other things. So generally at that point a radiation oncologist and a medical oncologist make a decision on if the best approach is either surgery, is either radiation or chemotherapy or some combination of the two. I see. And should a patient require chemotherapy, what are some common chemotherapies you would recommend? So the most common ones in pancreatic cancer used are uh, gemcitabine, 5 fluorouracil or 5-FU, iranotecan, and oxaliplatin. Mm -hmm. um, there is a lot of debate on which is the best combination, but uh, based on how well the oncologist feels that the patient would tolerate the side effects, they would make some combination of those. I see. And what are the usual side effects of these chemotherapies? <clears throat> so generally speaking, uh, you get nausea, fatigue, all chemo can lower your blood counts. Uh, and so you may be at a slightly increased risk of infection. There are some drugs that have unique some side effects. So renatecan can cause diarrhea. Mm -hmm. Oxaliplatin can cause, uh, affect the nerves and cause mm -hmm. numbness and tingling of the hands and feet. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend exercising while receiving chemotherapy? I think that's uh, based on, uh, on the patient. So there are some people who, if they generally are, would, were routinely exercising before they became ill, I think uh, continuing on some form of exercise regimen is good, but based on what they can tolerate. 
And what is pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy? Would you please explain that? Sure. So when the when the pancreas uh, has a tumor in it, um, the pancreas is not functioning properly. So the enzymes that it normally makes to uh, help digest fats and other foods are not made properly. And so as a result, patients can either lose weight or uh, have diarrhea. And so we give them uh, basically enzymes that are in a pill form that they take about 30 minutes before meals to help, help with digestion. I see. And can one work if undergoing chemotherapy? Most people uh, can continue to work. I think, oh, again, it depends on the, the individual and how, how um, healthy they are uh, and how, you know, how severely the pancreatic cancer has affected them. I see. What about sexual relations with a partner? Do you recommend that or do you dissuade that while one is receiving chemotherapy and radiation? Yeah. I definitely don't dissuade it. There's no reason um, that the patient cannot engage in sexual relations with their partner. I see. How do you deal with the depression and anxiety? Uh, I generally like to address that with the patient, and if need be, you know, I can prescribe certain medicines. I always also, if if uh, there are some more complex issues, would involve uh, a member of our team, either from psychology or uh, palliative care. And what are your recommendations for the spouses and children of the patients that are going through this with them? Uh, to I think it's important for them to try to be there for the patient, you know, maybe come to the visits and, and support them that way. I think that's, if possible, very important. I see. And sometimes pa some patients actually receive Cape Cytobine, which is the pill form of 5-FU. How do you deal with the hand-foot syndrome? What is that and how do you address that with your patients? Sure. Hand-foot syndrome is when patients can get pain or redness or swelling of the hands and feet. Uh, it depends. Some people are more predisposed to it. Uh, generally, we educate the patient that if they start getting pain or redness of the hands and feet, to stop taking the Cape Cytobine or Zolot and to call us and we'll uh, lower just the dose. Uh, there aren't really a lot of great medicines to help prevent that. There are some anecdotal reports that certain hand creams or maybe taking uh, vitamin, pyridoxine or vitamin B6 can help with that. I see. And you know, the most difficult question, what do you tell the patients regarding the odds of cure or the chances of the recurrence of the pancreatic cancer? Sure. Um, pancreatic cancer is a very difficult uh, cancer and so um, over the last 30 years pancreatic cancer, the survival hasn't improved uh, very much if at all. So if if surgery is not possible, I always discuss that the goal of treatment is not cure, but um, to help prolong life. But even with treatment, unfortunately, uh, the prognosis is not very good with pancreatic cancer. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching. We hope this has been educational for you.